not with great relish, but we're looking forward to them. Bob Pollock is here from the Penn State Extension, brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. You want to talk to Bob, give us a call, 479-1160. You can toss your problem over to him, and uh, within reason, he'll take a shot at it. Bob, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Hey, solve this high school sports thing for us, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I think march on. Maybe uh, there you go. Fun. There you go. March on. I, I like it a lot. All right, but let's talk about the real reason that you're here, uh, and that is, um, of course, lawn and garden issues, trees and shrubs, and your, what's going on out, out outdoors uh, with the various different things. We talk about invasive species. We talk about uh, invasive insects. We, all of these things become a part of our discussion, but Always at this time of the year, we talk about what's the latest in blight news, and uh, so give us an update. No news is good news. There you go. I like it. For 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 some reason, late blight, especially, uh, has remained in the south and has not moved its way up here yet. Now, we did have that big storm, the hurricane that came up through uh, early in the week, and that could have brought, moved some things along, um, especially we know um, downy mildew, uh, which is another disease organism that especially affects vine crops, uh, but that there's, there were more incidences of that, and there were known cases in Pennsylvania of downy mildew mm-hmm. uh, already last week. Um, but with this front coming up through, that may have moved some other things around. Um, we know well, last Sunday into Monday, uh, we had a jump in our numbers in the catches of corn earworm and fall armyworm. So there was a couple fronts that came through, and as a result of that, they those in adult insects floated in on uh, on the air streams in those fronts mm-hmm. uh, and showed up here. And of course, those. Those two insects especially uh, are, can be very detrimental to sweet corn. Um, they can also attack uh, peppers or another crop that they'll get into. But the adult moths are not the, the issue. It's the worms. Yeah. Um, so those, those moths lay eggs. Uh, and they'll lay them on pepper plants or on corn plants. And then those eggs hatch and the larvae bore into uh, and feed on the um, the corn, or get internally in the pepper. Mm-hmm. They'll make a hole in there and, and feed around in the pepper. I noticed uh, this week uh, that our cucumbers were suffering a little bit, um, and, and they seemed to be turning yellow very, very quickly along one side of them. Uh, and it didn't matter if they were mature or if they were just uh, growing cucumbers. So a couple things can be going on there. We are very dry. We've had very spotty uh, rainfall, and then when we've gotten some events, we haven't had very much quantity of rain. Um, some people have gotten dumped on a little bit, but for the most part, it's just a sprinkle and then it's gone. So the dry weather uh, can start to make that happen. The, the other thing we've kind of noticed over the summer, because it has been drier for the most part, um, more insect pressure. So there are mites, very tiny insects, um, if you have really good vision, you might be able to see them crawling around on leaves, and especially they'll be on the top and the bottom side of the leaves. It's much easier to take a piece of white paper, hold it underneath the leaves, mm-hmm. and tap the leaves. Um, the mites will drop off. They'll get onto that white surface, and you'll see the movement. You can finally you can see them and the movement uh, of them, and then you know you have them. The other thing could be aphids. Uh, they're also a, a sucking insect, so they remove the sap from the plant. They could be feeding on there. Mm-hmm. Leaf hoppers are another one, um, and thrips. Uh, thrips are also very tiny, uh, pretty elusive, but they could be feeding on those vine crops, on the cucumbers, um, and eventually from that feeding kind of cause a bronzing and then you'll get some yellowing and then you'll get browning of the, the foliage. Yeah. Okay. So those garden issues every year, you, there are various treatments that you can try and uh, see what level of success you have with them. I want to get out onto the lawn for a couple of moments. Um, of course, crabgrass season came upon us and, and hit us hard. 
uh, all across. And you just need to look at <laughs> people's yards, and you can see the crabgrass in their driveways uh, and sidewalks and see the, what the crabgrass does. And that's not a pretty thing, uh, but it's here. And uh, folks wanting to know, well, when do I treat for crabgrass? It's here now, but is this the time that I treat for it? Do I do it as a preventive um, after the season, or, or what's, what's the best remedy to approach a, pra- a crabgrass? Yeah, and, and we've, and it's spotty too. We had enough moisture early enough uh, after it was warm, and the temperatures, both soil and air temperatures, were warm enough for that to germinate because it is a, a summer grass um, and it likes heat and it doesn't germinate in cold conditions. And it needs just a little bit of moisture in the, in the top of the soil there, along with some heat to get it to germinate. Um, so the best, the most effective ways we have are to prevent it. So we put that crabgrass preventer on the yard in in the spring, and that prevents it from germinating. Mm-hmm. Then that'll do a pretty good job, but it's never 100% perfect. So you may need to follow up. Uh, and do a, a post-emergence treatment, which would be now. You've got the plant growing there. Uh, so there are a few, there's two or three different materials that you can use, and you can spray it on the right on the grass. Um, it will kill crabgrass, foxtail. Um, some of them even kill uh, nutsedge, which is another one. Uh, that can be growing now. It also likes warm weather. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you've overseeded your yard, if you've brought in topsoil and had to reseed spots or or just put a little top dressing over the yard at any time, you can bring those nutsedge seeds, along with foxtails and, <laughs> and crabgrass too, yeah. in with that soil, mm-hmm. unknowingly, of course, um, and then that'll start to grow and you wonder why this yellow green uh, angular it's almost like a triangular leaf it'll be the the midrib of it is there and then the leaves kind of are folded at an angle each way so that and it'll be a little more upright and it'll be noticeably different color kind of a lighter uh, lime green uh, than the rest of the grass Mm -hmm. So it kind of stands out. And if you touch the stem and grab the stem, it's almost, it's flattened a little bit or square, yeah. which is different than a regular grass, which would have a round stem. So all those can be treated now. Now, the caveat to that is because it's been drier, uh, we can, you may not get as good of control, uh, but still this time of year that can be treated okay I, I, and and really you can you know you could let it go um especially the crabgrass because it's an annual foxtails are an annual so they're going to go to seed and die uh we're trying at this point to prevent a lot of that seed from maturing and then being there Ready? very good nut been... edge is a perennial <laughs> yay <laughs> yeah so it's a, it's it's a tougher beast to control it comes back um i want to get back out into the garden because the, this just occurred to me somebody asked me this question they they knew a neighbor uh who had uh, great success in their garden this year and attributed it to mushroom manure and so their question was when do i apply it obviously this will be a question more for the fall than and than for for right now when we're in the middle of the growing season but they're wondering when do i apply mushroom manure uh, in order to enhance my garden? Is it something I put in the fall and just let soak in uh, through the course of the winter, or is it something I put in in the spring and plow it under? Well, you can do either. It's a source of organic matter, um, and that's definitely beneficial for our garden soil is to have that unco- incorporation of, of organic matter. Um, so after you get done harvesting uh, this summer and into fall, you can apply it then. It would be good to work it in rather than and mix it in rather than just leave it sit on top. Or if it's more convenient to wait till spring, put it on then and then work it into the soil then. Mm-hmm. Um, the one one concern with that can be depending on where your soil pH is. 
oftentimes mushroom compost has a pH between, it can be all the way up to eight, which is very alkaline. Mm -hmm. So if we get, if we start putting that on every year, uh, we can negatively affect our pH, get it out of the range, because we like to be 6.3 to 7, even 6.3 to 6.8 uh, for most vegetable crops. When we get above 7 and beyond, then we can start to uh, see growing issues with, with plants. You know, it's interesting um, so we you just say need to that. be careful about that. Oh, the other comment we need to make about mushroom manure uh -huh. is sometimes it can have some extra salts in there, which can then burn plant roots. Oh, okay. So that's... All right just need to know those things. The interesting thing to that, uh, to me about that is that this person said they put lime on and then mushroom manure. Would that not seem to one to counteract the other? Well, it won't counteract, but it will enhance the other because we're, with lime, we're increasing or making the soil more alkaline, mm -hmm. uh, so higher on the pH scale versus the opposite would be making it acidic. Um, so lime is going to make it more alkaline, and so will the, the mushroom compost, so we can overdo it in a hurry. Yeah, oh, okay. I don't know that they had any science behind what they were doing. They just decided that was the thing to try. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Well, if you haven't limed in a long time, if you haven't put any organic matter on in a long time, it probably didn't hurt it, but it would be good um, to now take a soil test and see where we are Yeah. Uh, so that then we can make good decisions going forward all right very good thank you sir hey you're quite welcome have a thank great you week. have a great weekend you too there's bob pollock it is the voice of indiana county wccs 101.1 fm and am 1160 fm and am 1160 